in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12b the Bible said work out your own salvation with fear and trembling if salvation is free then what work is attached to it what manner of work is attached to it if salvation is free then why does it need to be worked out when it is free salvation is said to be free then why do we walk grace is received freely then why do we need to walk it's because there is a responsibility that is upon you covenant of God the promises of God and his covenant will only work when you are responsible Amen work out your own salvation with fear and trembling throughout this month we'll be talking on pursuing a higher anointing pursuing a higher anointing a higher anointing pursuing a higher anointing for anointing is the currency of the spirit anointing is what the currency of the spirit just as money is the currency in the physical realm anointing is the currency of the spirit realm so the more anointed you are the more you are able to spend spiritually just as in the physical realm the more you have the money the more you are able to spend you have more spending capacity anointing is what the currency of the spirit so when you want to equate anything with the anointing in the physical realm there is no other you can compare with it than money what you spend what you labor for what you die for spirit physically is money everybody wants to get money and what we as children of God must labor for spiritually is the anointing Somebody said the anointing. There are two kinds of work. We have physical work, which is physical exertion of energy. And we have spiritual work, which is spiritual exertion of energy in prayers to release the anointing. And physical work to release the money. Somebody say money. Somebody say money, answer to me. So your currency in the spiritual realm is the anointing. The less anointed you are, the less you are able to spend spiritually. The more anointed you are, the more you are able to spend spiritually. Somebody say, I love the anointing. The reason behind yokes and bondages not being lifted it's not because the Jesus is not Lord. It's because there is no anointing. Where there is the anointing, yokes will be raised. Yoke will be destroyed. And no yoke or bondage will be lifted beyond the anointing that is present. Amen? So it doesn't matter how willing, how caring your pastor is. If the anointing is not there, he can't do it. So it is a thing, it is not a state you arrive and you say, I'm, I'm done. No, it is a continuous state. It is not a thing that is meant for the pupil. You need it. Somebody tell your neighbor, say, you need it. So when anointing is compared to money, you must know that when you ignore this anointing, what happened to you? You are ignoring yourself. You are ignoring your own life and your own destiny. 
Why? Because the world does not answer to grammar or your qualification or your certificate. The world does not answer to the fact that you have goods or you are beautiful. It answers to the anointing. Somebody say the anointing. The anointing represents the power of God in you. The anointing is synonymous to power. Somebody say power. So, when you, you must be interested in the anointing. You must be interested in the anointing. You must be interested in the anointing. It is not a thing to be left to one man. I have been pressing into the anointing even when I did not know that I was ever going to be called. All I was wanted was more of God more of him, more of his presence. Today, I will be speaking under the subtopic. The subtopic, dig your own well. Somebody said, dig your own well. And dredge your own river. Somebody said, dredge your own river. Dig your own well and dredge your own River. Dig your own well and dredge your own river. God does not bless any man behind him. Amen. When you see a man who is blessed without knowing why or how he was blessed, that man can never last in blessing. Ah, even if he lasts in blessing, he can never show any other person how to be blessed because he doesn't know. He doesn't know how it came. There is a conscious step you must take. When you become a born again, when you become born again and you, you accept Jesus, what you accepted is salvation. Somebody say salvation. And in Isaiah chapter 12 and verse 3, Isaiah chapter 12 and verse 3, the Bible said, with joy shall you draw water out of the well of salvation. So, what you got when you were saved is well. Somebody say well. It's a well. When you became a born again, you got a well. With joy shall you draw water out of the well of salvation. With what joy? With the spirit of joy. With what joy? The spirit of joy. Now, it is a dangerous thing to remain having a well. It is what? It is dangerous to remain having a well. With joy shall you draw water out of the well of salvation. So when you became born again, you got a well. Somebody say, you got a well. So you need to dig your well. You need to clear your well of feuds, of deaths. Out of the well of salvation, that means that God gave you a capacity to quench your test. When the Holy Spirit come into you, when the Holy Spirit, when the, you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you, you, you receive another capacity. Somebody say another capacity. Then you become a river. Somebody say a river. In John chapter 7 and verse 38. John 7, 38. Dig your own well. Drench your own river. At the beginning of the year like this, it is not the time for you to look for someone to help you. You need to start helping yourself. Somebody say help yourself. People are already sleeping in coffin because of the money they want to make this year. Some people are, are, are eating ordinary pepper since January 1st. Because when they stand in the market, once they are looking like this, everybody will be at their shop. And you will say you are not selling, you have the same product. Anywhere they step, they, they, they command authority in that place. Then you want to give Jesus a wiper and control the market. It's a lie, oh, they will control you. When the Holy Ghost comes, 
you become a river. Yes, John 7. Yes. He that believeth on him, as the scripture has said, out of inside him shall flow rivers of living water. Out of inside him, it becomes a river of living water. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, Paul speaking in verse 39, he said, And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. He said, repent and believe. So the only criteria to receive the river is to believe in Jesus so that you become a river. Why? It is in all these things that what the, your life depends on. It is in this thing that your life depends on. You are able to draw from the river. Amen. You are able to draw by the spirit from the river. But when you receive the spirit inside you, you become the river itself. You are no longer supposed to be a well. Amen. You become a river that people begin to drink from. So you, you are no longer supposed to be looking for solution. You are a solution. Somebody say, I'm a solution. See, you are a solution to this world. Somebody made your slippers is a solution to the world. Somebody saw the clothes you are wearing is a solution to this world. So if nothing is working around you, you are a problem to this world. Say, I'm a solution. You become a river, not just for yourself, that many other people will be coming to drink from. You cannot depend on another. Dig your own well and drink your own river. Enough of serving God the way you want. Enough. Enough of praying when only when you feel like. If you are not ready to change level in your spiritual encounter, you may not be able to do more. Amen? You may not be able to do more. Somebody who is not ready to change level in the anointing it's just like somebody who is not ready to work, to, to, to create more in his finances. Somebody who is not ready to do more for the anointing. It's like somebody who is not ready to do more for his what? Finances. It is time for real spiritual diligence in fasting and in prayer my brokenness is not your brokenness amen my fasting is not your fasting God we allow the anointing of your pastor to work for you to some extent where is your own amen where is what your own You can be in an anointed church and be molested. You can be where fire is blazing and you are barricaded. Why? When you refuse to be responsible, when you refuse to rise up and be who God said you should be. Somebody tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, be interested. In the anointing, your life depends on it. My holiness is not your holiness, dig your own way. A well can be dirty, a river that refuses to flow will stink. Amen. So, to have the Holy Spirit is one thing, to flow in the Spirit is another. A river that refuses to flow will burn. It will stink because the things is supposed to wash away. Brokenness is in the spirit, it's not in your brain. Yeah. 
And don't you, have you never seen somebody that is smoking and they say, this thing you are doing is bad. And they will tell you, I know. I know, I don't try. I don't, I don't. Mentally, mentally he knows. Mentally has agreed. He knows this thing is, is, is going to even destroy him. But he can't stop it. He is like a river that refused to flow. It starts stinking. Shout fire. I didn't get that fire. fire. Your life depends on this anointing. Dig your own well. In the beginning of the year like this, what, what are the things that your life depends on? Number one is that your life depends on divine instruction. Somebody say divine instruction. This divine instruction are the things that God will be telling you. Some of them are going to be audible enough for a deaf man to hear. Some of them are going to be audible in your dreams. Some will be audible in your vision of the night. And some will be audible by the scripture. Some will be very clear to you by the word of your man of God that is coming expressly to you that change your way, change this attitude, change this character, change this way you do your thing. But you won't hear. When you do not hear instruction, you are on a highway, a speedy way to destruction. In Proverbs chapter 1, in Proverbs 1 and verse 2, the Bible said, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man we hear and we increase learning and a, a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. In verse 7, the Bible said, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. He said in 8, My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. You know, because of the message of grace, people kick at the law. Huh? You are deceiving yourself. There is no kingdom without a law. Well, because of the message of grace, people what? Kick at the law. Say, grace cover you. For we are, there is no kingdom without the law. Even Jesus did not come to break the law. He came to what? Fulfill it. So what is, what is your grace teaching you? To be a vagabond. You must adhere to instruction if you want to be lifted. God will be telling some of you, increase your prayer life if you want to move to your next level. <laughs> God will be telling you, you are praying that you want to be a kingdom financer. You want to, you want to sponsor the work of God. If God may be telling you, as from this year, start giving 20%, no longer 10%. God might be telling you the time you are spending on your children is too much. I am the one that owns them. Do what I send you. God is going to pass an instruction to you, but that instruction, when you take it lightly, you are taking your life lightly. Without instruction, there cannot be any elevation or promotion. Your life depends on instruction. Somebody say instruction. It is when you begin to obey this instruction, then you begin to see the hand of God in due time. Somebody say in due time. Number two, your life depends on obedience. Somebody say obedience. I didn't hear that. Your life depends on obedience, not just the instruction. How you obey matters. If you be willing, if you be obedient, what he said you should do, how did you respond to it? How were you quickened to do it? Did you sustain the temple when you began it? 
Isaiah 1 19 said, If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the fruit of the land. If ye be willing, if ye be obedient, willingness and obedience must go hand in hand, not just obedience. There are some obedience that is born out of rebellion. Amen. There are some obedience that is done in rebellion. Inside them is crooked. You move just because you don't want people to talk. You do it because you want to please somebody. That's not willingness. It's willingness and obedience. Your life depends on obedience. If truly God is God, and if truly God can do all things, why do you act differently to his instruction? Many of us have done nothing to actually see the hand of God. We are only be assuming. We have only been deceiving ourselves. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5 and 6. 2 Corinthians 10, 5 and 6. Your life depends on obedience. Yes. Casting down imaginations and every high things that exalted itself against the knowledge of God bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And what? In verse 6, yes. And having a readiness to what? To revenge all disobedience when your own obedience is fulfilled. When your own obedience is fulfilled, God said, they don't want you to make money. Now, what you must do, leave that job you are do doing, go and do a lesser job. Amen. Now you, normally, you begin to look at what is the meaning of this? You may not understand. But once you know it is God speaking to you, you better go. Your lifting is in your willingness and your obedience. Because in that lesser job, you don't know what is waiting for you there. It may be a lesser job, but be owned by a big man. But be owned by a great person. And that is where your lifting will be. After your obedience is fulfilled, after your own obedience is fulfilled, he used the foolish things of the world to dumbfound the wise. Listen to me. You cannot overcome the devil just because you are powerful. Amen. You are not always going to overcome the enemy because of what? Power. You are going to overcome the enemy because of what? Obedience. You are not going to overcome the enemy always because you are powerful, but because of what? Obedience. There are times that your life will be saved by obeying a particular instruction. Uh, when the Lord told me, he said, Look, now I don't, don't attend to anybody again. Anybody. Close the door to counseling. He said, look at your enemy. Look at them. They are planning to strike you. They will come to this office in the name of counseling and they will come and strike.
Somebody tell your neighbor, say, obey what the Lord is telling you. You cannot continue to give what you are giving and expect a next level breakthrough. You can't continue to do what? Look, this is the gospel. If I'm adding anything to it, you can, you can stop me. You can't continue to give what you are given and think you are going to ascend to the next level. There is a grace that must come upon you to be able to surrender what you must to assess your next level. There is a grace that must come upon you. Why? Because God is also willing to, to give to you that thing. But if your heart is not even prepared or open, when that grace come upon you, you will be careless. Either in time or in talent or in resources, you can continue to give the same thing. In 2 Samuel 22, your life depends on obedience. As the year is rolling by, I want my next level. There is something that must go. There is something that must fall on the altar of a sacrifice. There is something. Don't let, don't deceive. If you hang on to anything, your life depends on whatsoever you are hanging on to. Amen? Anything you hang on to, your life depends on it. If you say you, you, you cannot give your life to Christ, if you are at that level, your life depends on yourself. You are the Lord and the owner of yourself and you are waiting for destruction. If you say it is your money you, you depend on, then your life depends on your finances. If you say your time is too precious to you, there is no time for God and God is saying, give me time, give me time. Look, your school is not my school. Amen. I will only bring this knowledge to you. Your examination is not my own. You need to know where you are and where you need that change. Yes, Second Samuel 22 and verse 45. Yes. Aha. As soon as they hear, they shall be obedient unto me. As soon as they hear, they shall be obedient unto me. Strangers shall submit to me. After your own obedience is fulfilled. After your own obedience is what? Fulfilled. Then strangers shall submit themselves to you. Strangers shall submit themselves to you. Strangers shall submit themselves to you. After your own obedience is fulfilled, money will begin to answer to you. After your own obedience is fulfilled, God begin to change the people around you because he's the owner of people. After your own obedience is fulfilled, God remove you from that office doing somebody else's work and working what does not Relate with your destiny and place you where your destiny will match and where you have peace. After your own obedience is fulfilled, you will not call before these things answer. The reason behind any form of struggle is because of one level or the other of obedience or disobedience. The Bible said disobedience is worse than what? The sin of witchcraft. We made an instruction here that one person in ten souls, there, there are those who will keep coming and they will never, they can't preach and they can't draw anybody. It's disobedience. What does your life depend on? You said number one is what? 
divine what? I didn't hear someone here. Number two is what? Obedience. And number three, your life will be sustained by your faith. Somebody say your faith. Your life depends on your faith. The Bible said the just shall live by what? Their faith. The just shall live by their faith. Having done all these things in obedience, having fulfilled divine instruction, it is your faith that keeps you. It's not your faithfulness. Amen. Having done this in obedience, having done this divine instruction, what keeps you what generates your impact and your results is your faith. Somebody say, my faith. Faith is a living force. Faith is not mental agreement with the word of God. Amen? Some people think when you read the Bible, and the Bible says, you shall be healed, then you believe. That is belief when you believe it. Faith is different. Faith is a spiritual virtue. Faith is what? A spiritual virtue. Faith is not mental acceptance of scriptural truth. You can mentally agree and be physically denied. Is faith is what? Is spiritual. When you mentally agree to spiritual truth is what? Belief. Somebody say belief. When you mentally agree to scriptural truth, it is what? Belief. But belief is in the act. Faith is in what you do and faith is the power to do. Hey, Galo Shata. Faith is what? In what you do and the power to do. When you see any man who has faith, he will have power. So faith itself is what? Power. Faith itself is what? Power. Your level of faith is equal to your power. At work, in you, your life depends on your faith, not your faithfulness. So you must build your faith. Somebody say, build your faith. Your life depends on your faith. And this faith is in God. Faith in God. Faith in the word of a servant. Faith in the word of a servant. And faith in the Holy Ghost. Somebody say in the Holy Ghost. It's called the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith. It's called what? The spirit of faith. Is the one who empowers you to do. In Romans chapter 1 and verse 17, let's read that scripture. Yes. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed. From what? The righteousness of God is revealed from what? Faith to faith. As it is written. The just shall live by what? By his faith. The just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by faith. The righteousness is being revealed from one level to the other. Faith to faith. The just shall live by his faith. So your life depends on your faith. 
When we say faith in God, we are saying faith in the word of God, in the proclamation of the word of God, in the pro proclaiming the word of God, speaking it accordingly as you believe in your heart to be for you. Faith in the one is to you and faith in the spirit. A man will be sustained in the days of his infirmity by his what? By his spirit. A man will be sustained in the days of his infirmity by his spirit. So the day a man is challenged, it is his spirit that will sustain him. So the level of faith in your spirit is much more important than the level of faith that you say is in your head. Sustained by his faith in the spirit. Not the faith in the head. It's not an issue of the head. So your life depends on your faith. So you must walk on the spirit of faith. Listen to me. Everything in this kingdom circles around the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everything circles around the Holy Spirit. If you don't want to remain in class one forever, till the day you go and meet the Lord, your Savior, you need to get personal with the Holy Spirit. You can be personal with your Bible and yet not know it. The Bible is meant to reveal the person of Jesus Christ. But Jesus introduced you to the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit now began to explain who Jesus is. And he creates within you the person of Jesus. He puts within you the power of Jesus. So the name of Jesus cannot even walk in your mouth beyond the level of the power that is granted by the Holy Spirit. It is not how loud you shout that name. It is how full you are of the Spirit. So you can be in your house and you are hitting the floor. Everybody in the compound know you are praying and they are still mocking you. Witches and wizards, they will still go to their meeting and come back successfully. They say they don't finish. They are going to flog their baby. When you, you are finished praying, they still come and flog your child. What kind of prayer are you praying? Check yourself. There's something missing. <laughs> you finish praying, they say, come and flog your child. Or you finish praying, they say, come and flog you. You are not filled with the Holy Ghost. Look, it centers all around him. Everything. If Jesus depended on the Holy Ghost, you need to. For your own good, you need to. Say, thank you, Jesus. Is somebody happy this morning? Is somebody ready to dig his own well? Is somebody ready to drench his own river? So you become a flowing what? River. You become a flowing what? River. Everything that you need is in the well of salvation. You don't need any man to draw for you. The door to the well and the river is your mouth. The Bible said what? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it, they will eat the fruit thereof. When you use your mouth in the Holy Ghost, you are creating your future. It doesn't matter whether you are seeing anything. Something is happening to your body, to your spirit, and to your physical life. It's not in vain. For you to, to make yourself be anointed. Amen.